Hello, this is a uh, line spectrum of a C4 note. And you can see a couple of things here. I'm plotting power in the note versus the frequency at which those powers occur. Here is the first partial right here at about 261.6 hertz. And you can see I'm also plotting in the red dash dot back here the location of the theoretical harmonics. So the first partial hits on the first harmonic, or the fundamental. Second partial is pretty close. Third partial, fourth, fifth, sixth. Let's take a look at the sixth a little closer here. Now it's starting to be a little bit sharp of the fundamental. Over here, the eighth for the eighth one is sort of like this. It's about oh, it's several hertz sharp. Also, there's got two peaks here, which most more than likely come from the fact that the thing is all the unisons are not strong, up, not tuned properly or perfectly. But we also notice, for example, down here, the ninth partial is heavily attenuated. It's down to about 50 dB over here because the string was probably struck at one-ninth of its peaking length. And as we go on out here, we see that the blue peaks, which are the partials, are significantly sharp relative to the harmonics. And it gets more so till you get out here, it's difficult to even associate one of the peaks with a harmonic. Okay, let's see what we can do now to get some insight into this by using simula simulation. Got a picture of a, a, a simulated C4 string at rest. Over in this left hand side is the, are the graphs. This is plotting along the string. It's 0.51 meters long. The bridge is over here at the right. I'm also plotting a short history of the force on the string. It says 0 and then minus 1 and minus 2 because this is all time before time zero when we're going to strike the key. Here is one-ninth of the length of the string, this vertical red dotted line. That's where we're going to strike the string. And initially, the force on the string is zero. We're not counting the down bearing from the string. But the string is under tension. It's a flexible string, so there's no elasticity. And there's only a sideways pull on the bridge right here. So let's start the simulation. Okay, the uh, string was struck. And it generated a pulse that started to move to the right. After it actually reflected off this side and it started to move to the right. Now you see here's the uh, force down here, times zero and a little bit over one millisecond. Actually 1.34 milliseconds. The slope of the string over here at the bridge is still zero, so it's pulling sideways on the bridge. There's no vertical force on the bridge. Let's continue the simulation. Okay, now we see the pulse has moved over there. The slope is negative. It's pulling up on the bridge, and it's generating a force at the bridge. And here's that force starting to show up. Now we're going to get reflected and inverted. Okay, there's a reflection, an inversion, and here's the force because for a while the, the string was pulling down on the bridge. So we have a whiplash force that occurs once every cycle, and now the force is back to zero. Okay, the pulse is moving over here, now it's going to reflect and invert, come back. Now it's getting close to the bridge again. Still zero force because the slope is zero at the force at the bridge. Now the once again the for the uh, string slope is pulling up on the bridge, so we got a positive force here. It's going to be reflected and pull down. There it's pulling down. We got a negative force. Okay, so we now have the pulse moving back 
to the other side towards the agraphs. And this is the end of two cycles, 7.65 milliseconds for a string that has a fundamental frequency of 261.6 hertz. So the period is of the string, that the natural period is half of that 7.65. You notice that the flexible string returned to its initial rest position after two cycles. So we'll stop it at that point. Let's repeat the experiment. This time we're going to do two strings side by side. One that's flexible, which is the one we just worked on, and another one that's stiff. The stiff string is the realistic string. It has elasticity. Elasticity is the characteristic of a string that says if you deform me, I'm going to want to return to my undeformed position or shape. So if you have a flexible string, like a cloth string, and you turn it a little bit, bend it, it will stay where you bend it after you leave it alone. If you do that to a number 15 piano string or a wire, and you bend it and then let it go, it's going to snap back. Okay, let's let this thing fly and see what goes on here. We're going to have two strings. One is the, the blue trace will be the flexible, and the green trace is the stiff. And right now the green is over writing the blue. Okay, we're starting. So we struck the string. The pulse is starting to move to the right. You can see there's a slight difference already, but not much. Okay, now we're at the bridge. We have a down force from both strings. You can see that the green and the blue started to go up. You can also see there was a little bit of activity even before that because the elastic string already had some leading ripples in it because of its re reaction. Let's continue on now. Okay, the strings are now going back the other direction. They've been reflected, inverted. You can see the force. The green trace is the, I beg your pardon, yeah, the green trace is the force of the stiff string. It's not quite the same shape. Gonna come back and get reflected and inverted. Already you can see that the green shape is different. In other words, we, here's the blue trace, which is identical to what we saw before. Here's the green stiff string, and it's already got a ripple out front of the main pulse. In fact, it's got a couple of ripples. You can see them in there very carefully. And you can also see, see those ripples are getting down to the bridge, and they're showing up a little bit in the force. Okay, see now here, those leading ripples are causing up and down forces on the bridge that are not coming from the flexible string, because that's flat. If the blue trace for the force of, of the flexible string is zero, but there's already some activity from the stiff string. Okay, reflection, coming back. You can tell there's a significantly different looking shape here in the force, pro force profile. And you can also tell that the force profile for the stiff string is different from the previous one whereas the flexible is identical to the previous one. That's because those ripples that were generated by this one have come through and now are getting acted on by the bridge. Because at the bridge, there's a force from the string, but there's an all equal and opposite force of the bridge on the string. And it's causing the string that has the elasticity to accelerate because the string that has the elasticity is reacting to that force because it wants to go back to its undeformed situation. The flexible string could care less. It's quite happy no matter what you do to it. So now we've got almost two cycles here. Okay, the pulse is coming back and you can see it. This is 7.65 milliseconds. The green trace for the elastic string is significantly ahead of the blue trace for the flexible string. Now let's take a look at more than just two cycles. Here's the force plot, force versus time. And I'm looking at almost 30, uh, 40 
milliseconds. You can see it starts out over here. The force profile of the two strings are similar, and they start to diverge. There's a lot of activity for the elastic string because of the fact that it is reacting to the force it ex experiences as it is reflected and inverted at the bridge. Let's take a look at the lead of the stiff string over the flexible string. You start out, this is time along here, milliseconds. This is the, the amount of lead that the stiff has over the flexible. You start out, it starts to gradually grow. It's, it's erratic because there are so many wiggles in the, str in the string. But you see it, gra it gradually gr grows up and then kind of steadies out here. But it's a very erratic looking curve. But the elastic string is leading the flexible string. And what is that going to tell us? Well, if we look at the line spectrum of that pair of strings, we see something quite similar to what we saw for the C4 key earlier. We see strength at the fundamental here. Both strings have strength right about the same spot. You see right there. It's about 261 hertz. Second, second uh, partial, third partial, right about in here. You see that the flexible string is still right on the theoretical harmonic, the red dash dot line. But the elastic string is starting to get sharp relative to it. And over here, you see that Neither string has anything going on at the ninth harmonic or the ninth partial because that's where we struck it. But by this time, we're getting some lead going on, just like we did for that real C4 string. And pretty soon, we get into the situation where it's difficult to assign one of these peaks with the fundamental. So we get a similar curve to what we got before with the C4. So the the idea here is that the inharmonicity, which is this fact that the partials are sharp relative to the fundamentals or the harmonics, this inharmonicity is coming from the reaction of the string with the bridge.